Hello, my name is Martin. Welcome back to another video. How are you all doing? I hope you're well. You may notice I've had a bit of a cough and a bit of a cold, and that's all it was, a cough and a cold. Went straight onto my chest and my throat, and I lost my voice for a couple of days, so I was panicking whether it would come back in time to do this video, and it has just, but I'm a little bit croaky still, and that's on this, and it's gonna be on the voiceovers as well, so I do apologize. Anyway, hot drinks all the way. Right, so this week's video, it's a video of two parts. I went out on two separate occasions, filmed two separate locations, and neither of them really added up to a full video, so I've decided to put them together. Two quite different locations. The first one is in Stockport. Now, do you remember when we walked down the banks of the River Mersey and we saw all those caves and tunnels on the other side of the bank and we were looking and wondering what they were? So we still got those in mind, we were investigating them. We're gonna do the caves that we saw, which is the easiest ones to do. So, you're gonna join me now as I cross the River Mersey and we'll take a look across at the caves and then I'll try and tell you what they were and we'll go inside and take a look. Oh, and on this one we're joined by Danny, Daft Monkey, you may have watched his videos on YouTube, and his dad, Steve. Right, so, what we'll do is we'll just walk across the River Mersey Yonder, here. And I'll just show you the caves from the other side of the river. And you can see what we saw that first time we did that walk down the, uh, the riverbank. And then we'll nip back in. Right opposite side of the river. There they are across there. They look fantastic from this side to be honest with you. I'll do a zoom for you. Uh, what they don't tell you is the bloody way to Maggie's Caves is along the edge of the river uh, through all the undergrowth. Okay, we're here. Now you'll notice at the entrance there's this brick butted up to the caves. I'm just showing you this because you can see that they're not that deep down and you can see how thick they are, hewn out of the local sandstone. Now these are called um, the Brinksway Caves, locally known as Maggie's Caves. Um, I don't know who Maggie was, she apparently died here, I don't know when she died here, but that's just the local le legend, Maggie's Caves. Nice bit of a shaft there as well. Now, across the river where we've just been, there's a little board, and all it says on it is that it dates these caves to around about the 1670s. Um, so, your guess is as good as mine. Somebody possibly lived here. You can see evidence there of a window, probably. Um, and as we go through... to this area here, they've actually directed a little bit of a brook or a spring through it and that runs out down the bank, down the steep bank to the River Mersey. It's a baffling place if you're trying to work out what the use was because you've got things like this in the wall here as we cross over here, you've got, I think there's been a racking system there, wood in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the wall there, that's created some kind of racking or shelving system. And then again, you've got the brickwork and you've got the metalwork poking out evidence of later uh, use of the caves. Right, so you'll see Danny there on the left and he's just looking, we're looking at a hidden cave down below here. There's like an archway and then a, a, a sunken cave. We think there's possibly a, a load of rubble being put in front of that. So what I'll do is I'll get the GoPro 
and I'll shove it in and we'll have a look. Now as it is, it was difficult to get the torch in. I was thinking of going down there, but it, it wasn't really worth it because there's not a great deal in there. But you know what I'm like, I like, if I see a recess, I like to shove my camera in and have a look at it. And then we've got the, some caves behind us and then there's a little open bit and then they carry on here. Now the thing that baffles me about this is, if you're going to build these as a place to live, why would you put all those portals in there you can see on the left? It would make it, surely it would make it very drafty, a very drafty living place. Um, but I don't know, I don't know. So what have we got, what information has we, have we got? Let me let me read you something from the... Um, the um, a subterranean Stockport book written by uh, Emma Brown. So who who dug the caves? Well, we've got an account in the book that says they were dug by the ancient corn mill tunnel diggers in the uh, early 18th century. So that puts them around about early 1700s. So we've got two slightly conflicting accounts, 1670s and early 1700s. Certainly, there was a lot of work at the time around around the River Mersey, um, mills springing up, corn mills springing up, all sorts of water wheels in use that needed head races, tail races, and a lot of tunnel digging needed to be done. So that's who the people are who were suspected of digging these and possibly lived here. Um, this sandstone is very, very workable, and it's a very plausible uh, idea. They certainly would have had the tools to do it as well. Now, it's also thought that some of the navvies who built the Stockport Viaduct, the famous Stockport Viaduct, lived in the caves. They didn't necessarily dig them, but they lived in the caves. So what about this? What about this obvious later industrial use that we see here? Something's gone on here, hasn't it? So there's an account that says in and around uh, 1851, the caves were used as a distillery for the purification of gas tar. So that explains the sort of industrial that we see, these these things on the wall here, and the brickwork and the, the metal bracketry. And I'm not saying it explains everything, but it's a plausible reason why you would get this brickwork and you would get the, the metalwork around as well. Now, it's also, there's been people living here for years, even recently, homeless people come down here and use it as a shelter and a place to live. Um, so there you go. Um, I don't know where the legend of Maggie came from, but we've certainly got uh, another ghost attached to the caves. Apparently, there's a lady called Peggy Travis. Apparently, the ghost of Peggy Travis uh, walks on the road above um, and she uh, comes down and visits the caves. She was foully murdered by drunken men one night. Doesn't say when, doesn't say why, but poor old Peggy Travis apparently walks through the caves. Yeah. Just show you the view from outside here on the bank, the river bank. Um, obviously there's a river, you've got to be careful down here now. Because <clears throat> there's a bit, of a bit of a drop down there to the river. Well, that's, this is what you see from across the river. Um, you see all the sides of them there, you see. I can't really go along there because it's a bit dodgy. So I'm here with I'm here with Anthony. Hello. Daft Monkey. <laughs> if you watch his videos, you're from Stockport. I'm from Salford, but I live in Stockport. Lives in Stockport, yeah. so you're an expert. What's this all about? Don't know. Yeah, same here. <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> Ain't got a clue. I personally think it's just a, a bit of a combination of so many different sort of eras. Yeah, yeah. It's been definitely. used for multi-purpose over the years. I yeah, mean, yeah. See, it's absolutely, it's so random and crazy, but mm. it's full of history. And everyone's been here, we're like, we're probably the, you know, the 10,000 people to be, to come here, but uh, we've come here, I think, uh, just to speculate as to what, what was going on here. And then behind us here, behind the camera, it's just completely uh, impenetrable. You've got a steep bank down to the River Mersey, and it's completely impenetrable that way. One thing I do want to show you from a geological point of view, if you take a look at this, where did I see it, where did I see it? Um, put it a big light on, put big light on. Oh yeah, there it is. So this is a, probably the remains of an old beach or a riverbed here. Look at this. I'm no geological expert, 
but it looks like that might have been some sort of riverbed or something that's been compressed. It's got all the stones in and everything. And if you look at the layers above it, there's nothing. So it makes you wonder if that's <laughs> pure, pure speculation. Um, a riverbed or a beach, and then over time it's either dried up or the sea's recessed, and then uh, you've got it covered over with just normal sandstone. But look at that. Looking back there into a bit of a geological time. What's that? It's like a thimble, but... Is it hollow inside? It's got like a knurled outer there, and it's uh, got a thread inside. Can you hold that between your fingers? And I'll just, while I focus, it's got like a thread inside. Uh, it's not a thimble, is it? No. It's like, it reminds me of somewhat off an old coal fire, a yeah. little like flue or a drawing hatch. But it's hard to tell in it what it is. But it's old. Definitely old. Been down there a while, that. It's like quite a shaft. It's quite a shaft up there, isn't there? Yeah, what do you mean? That's been mounted. Yeah, God knows. So there you go, our local uh, little conundrum, Maggie's Caves or the Brinksway Caves in Stockport. Now, we went back over to the other side of the river and we visited the Weir because we like it there. We like to look for things on the uh, bit of a beach there. And I met someone who watches the videos. He was called John. He was out walking his dogs. He said hello. I said hello, John. And he took me um, to the side of the Weir, to the brickwork there, the stonework, you see. And he was showing me some marks. Look at this. You can see the old mason's marks there. You see a B. Um, another B there, Star of David there as well, absolutely fascinating, I never knew this was here. So thank you John for pointing these uh, marks out for us. think the Mason's marks, not quite sure, uh, it's the only plausible reason why I would, you would see that on those big uh, pieces of stonework. But yeah, it's just hidden away in the, uh, in the bushes, um, just at the side of the weir. Right, so there you go. Let's move on to the second part of the uh, the video now. So there you go, Maggie's Caves or the Brinksway Caves, whatever you want to call them. An absolute bugger to find information on, but I just found enough snippets to, to be able to paint a picture of what they were. Anyway, let's move on to the next location. But first of all, as always, uh, it's brew time. Okay, so now we're heading to the north of Manchester, an area called Rottenstall. That's not the exact location, but that's roughly the area that we're going to. We're in Lancashire. Um, let's go and take a look at this uh, mine. But like I say, first off, let's uh, have a brew. We'll see what it's like. I don't want no dead flies in that. <laughs> and we've got a tip of the day. Tell me something that I never knew about making tea. When the tea bag sinks, it means it's ready. The, le sure, sure the leaves that. have um, collodulated. Right. It's funny, isn't it, how the, the, the rest of the uh, civilised world don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> have you found somewhere? Yeah. It's the entrance. You feel the cold, can't you? Yeah. No, that's in the entrance. Look there, the kids. That's from above there, them falling rocks. Ooh. Wow. It's quite a cold blast coming out there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's nice in this hot day. So it's quite nice on a hot day, but we need to find an entrance where we can take a look inside. Yeah. And wait, there isn't a sign there saying danger of death. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, let's crack on. 
It's just behind us, the gate's open, so we're going to take a look inside. It's quite odd this concept for me of a stone mine. You would thought sort of thing, stone, just quarry it. Um, but yes a stone mine i'll need to do some reading and i'll try and tell you what what they took out of here but the whole area has got some um it's renowned for its stone there's another one we've just been to look at uh, down the hill which was renowned for some really expensive sort of sandstone i think anyway looks very dangerous so i've got the hard hats on we'll see what it's like and we'll take a look and see how far this thing goes on so yeah goes on quite a way but it looks like it comes to a dead end up there so we won't go that way We'll carry on uh, this way. Uh, I mean to go that way. <laughs> Which way? This way. Pillar two. Uh, so there's an arrow there. <laughs> Do we trust it? It's saying go that way. Maybe we should go that way then. Eh? Okay, as we know from previous mine explorers, these are singing posts. They're not designed to support the roof, uh, but they're wedged in. And if the roof starts to come in, the wood starts to crack and make creaking noises. And if you hear that, you get out rather rapid. I'm led to believe that this type of mining is called pillar and stall. I'd have to look that up, but I think it's where they leave the uh, part of the brick, the part of the stonework in to support the roof. Uh, the place is vast. It's like which way do you go? Uh, but yeah, it's like which way do you go? Which is the best way to go for the most nice things to find? It's so I just don't know the place, uh, but it's huge. Yeah. We've only come not very far, and already behind us, it all looks the same. It's going to be a bit of a sod. Right, the place just goes on and on forever and there's just offshoots everywhere and literally you turn around and it all looks the same. All looks the same, so it's very dangerous. There, aren't, there is string on the floor, as you can see, that various other explorers have put bits of string down to find ways. There's these arrow system, which I don't understand. <clears throat> I'm led to believe, so we were looking for an interesting feature and I'm led to believe that there's an old crane in here somewhere. Um, there are pictures of it on the internet. We couldn't find it. Apparently it's deep in the mine and you have to go around the perimeter and deep into the mine. There was no way we were going to find that crane and we, we, we've been great to find it, but we didn't do. Um, we, it was all we could do to have a look round. Uh, another singing post there. All we could do to have a look round and find our way back, to be honest with you. Uh, wood on the floor there. Someone's been flossing. That's not the best though, is it? So we'll keep walking on. It looks quite strong though, like it's... Yeah, but no, because these... I don't know, you know. It looks like they've gone in from side to side, doesn't it? Side to side, that sort of thing. So look on the floor there, it looks like there's been uh, a bit of a railway, that's bolts isn't it for a sleeper, there's a wooden sleeper there. Uh, look at that, when you talk about like that. See them bolts there? Definitely been a bit of a track here possibly. And there's another sleeper there if we go forward. See there's another one there. So there's been a bit of a cart trail there, aren't there? And the string goes on. See the string there? You're going down? Let's have a quick look. It's 
nothing. Nothing. Just a. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a void. But it's actually just a void. Um, if James passes to the camera, I'll show you. All the string here, where people have marked it for the way in and the way out. Chuck us the camera, James. Ah, cheers. So there's nothing really to be seen. It's just a... Uh, it looked like it went on quite a way here. Hey, I get a bad vibe about this place. I don't know what it is, do you? Mm, it's a little bit creepy. It's not that it's creepy, it's just the, the safety aspect of it. Uh, it's not brilliant. And the pieces of wood, it's not good, is it? And the lost, the idea of getting lost down there is horrific. <laughs> I know. So when we see that on the way back, we know we've got to go that way. I did a little arrow. Well, Last, no yeah, an arrow but that arrow has now disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> what gets me is the kind of, there's a route there. Well then they kind of block it off with a lot of rubble there, don't they? That's a lot of rubble in front of the, uh, the route. And then if you go over there, looks like you can go on down there somewhere. But we'll stick to the uh, stick to the road here, shall we? So I tell you now, it's a good job we put those stones there because literally you turn round and it looks exactly the same behind you as it does in front of you. Uh, James scraped a bit of an arrow on the wall, absolutely pointless, as soon as you stood back from it you couldn't see. So anyway, this is Pinner Stone Mine, what's it all about, what did they do here, uh, I'll try and tell you. So it's working life, it opened in 1841 and it was disused by 1923. Um, some of the firms that were established here were Butterworth and Brooks, uh, later Brooks and Brooks, um, and the it was used to mine lower Haslingdon flags, which apparently were quite sought after. Here's a picture of the quarry and the mines back in the day. Uh, I presume this was taken in the 1800s. I haven't got a date on this, um, but a fantastic picture and gives you an idea of what it was like uh, when it was in use. So the stone they brought out of here was uh, building stone, flags for the street, um, sets, which I know was cobbles, and engine beds. So there you go. It was must have been good quality stone, and they mined it out of this place. Now, we had a friend with us called Michael, and to quote Michael, he said, basically, 40 yards in, and you've seen it all, and that is pretty much sums up this place. 40 yards in, and it's more and more of the same. I wish we could have found that crane. But we found that pile of stones, so we're heading back out now. So the stones, so we need to go right. Yeah, there's the stones, so we need to go right. Is, a pirate, is, is that be, not a better idea? There must be an echo there. Is that not a better idea, piling them up like that? So we can see that we need to go now. This way. That way. Not good though, is it? Put light up there to it. Just, just balance on a bit of a thingy there. Oh, that's it. That's the exit. There you go. This is what gets me. These you've got these big roof spaces, and then these kind of pillars that they've left in place, supporting the roof. I do get a bad vibe about this, but I don't know about you, what do you think, James? It is scary, but you will get, it's easy to get lost. Yeah, a bit of a bad vibe. Um, but, and there's arrows, people have been in before us and put arrows on the, uh, on the columns, but the different colours, so the only one I can relate to is green, that perhaps is the way out, but there's the red arrows, purple arrows, meaningless, completely meaningless, but uh, yeah, we're gonna head on out. You bang your head then? Yeah. Then you let you want a hard hat. I had to you know. Remember your thing, you know. Right, just pick it up for us. You 
you could probably go down there for days and get completely lost. Yeah. Because <laughs> everywhere, I, that moment where I turned around and I just thought, I'm going, th these knew. I couldn't work out which way we'd come from. It was really, it was there a was horrible string. moment, yeah. wasn't it? There was string everywhere, weren't there? Yeah, there was string, but it didn't seem to necessarily lead out. No, it, it just <laughs> led to all different directions. And the arrow system, yeah. I'd need a small pamphlet and a key. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get that at all. Uh, but yeah, I would go again, but I'd have to be led in there to go and see something very specific. Apparently there's the remains of an older crane in there or some sort of winch mechanism or something. Mm. Well, yeah, worth a look though, weren't it? Yeah, good. So there you go, pin a stone mine. That was a completely new one on me, the idea of a stone mine. And the place, like, like Michael said, 40 yards in and you've seen it all. Um, so I don't mean to disrespect the place, but really, really was so samey inside. It was incredible. And that horrific moment where I turned around with my torch and I just went, hang on a minute. Where did we come from? This is all the same. You could so easily get lost. I would go back, but the only way I'd go back is if there was a guide that could take me in and take me to the crane. Other than that, the whole place is fairly featureless. But thank you to John for taking us there and uh, coming up with that location. Anyway, there you go. That said, thanks very much for watching. Take care. I can feel a Manchester video coming on or a railway one coming on, what do you reckon? <laughs> um, that said, thank you very much, take care, see you very soon in the next video, bye for now. Flapped out. Mm, nice. <laughs>